Hey there, what's up internet? My name is Black Light Attack, and yes indeed, the summer 2013 update is upon us, and as hyped, this is a pretty major update for TF2. It's a pretty big uh, rebalancing effort. It's not quite as big as I expected it to be, but it's still pretty big, definitely bigger than your average old balance patch. And uh, they readjusted quite a few weapons pretty dramatically, and some of them were minor changes, some of them were pretty major changes. Two new maps added, a whole bunch of new cosmetic items, unfortunately no new weapons, which is, you know, shitty, but we got a lot of other content as well, so we can't really complain too much. And uh, just if you want to follow along with me in the description is the uh, patch notes if you need a link to that. And we're just going to go ahead and start with the general stuff. Now, the general updates was a lot of HUD fixes, bug fixes, stuff like that. A lot of uh, HUD improvements like text-based searching in the store and in your backpack, which is pretty cool. New crates, which are actually summer coolers. There are, I think, eight of them right now. Yup, eight. Each one has a matching color-coordinated key that only opens that color crate, and each color of crate has a specific set of seven items that it could possibly drop. I think it's seven. I don't know if it's divided exactly evenly, but it's around seven or eight for each one. Maybe some of them have six, but um, basically you're going to want to take a look in the description and look at the crate that you're about to open to make sure it has stuff you want in it. If it has like two or three items you might want, you might want to consider opening it. Otherwise, you know, maybe hold off and try to trade that crate for another crate. I'm sure some crates are going to end up being worth more than others before the event's over. It's kind of cool. A lot of the items look really freaking good. I am definitely gunning for that Lieutenant Bites Raccoon Mist because it's the greatest thing I've ever seen for the soldier. But that's the uh, the new content aside from the maps. And the maps I talked about in the last video, it's just two maps that actually have existed in the community before. It's only just now that they're being added to the official Valve Standard stock rotation. And that would be CP Stand-In and CP Process. Um, and there were a huge slew of bug fixes, exploit fixes, um, small clipping issues and building inside spawns, all different kinds of things that were fixed in a crap load of existing maps. And I'm not going to list them all here because there's just simply too many bug fixes that changed. I mean, I know there was a big thing with the rock and badlands that everybody was excited about, but just go ahead and look at the patch notes if you want to see everything that was changed with each of the maps. But generally speaking, the map should hopefully just play a little bit smoother without those bugs and a little bit less frustrating for new players. Going back to the crates real quick, I think there was one neat little thing that they added where if you double click on a crate or click the crate and then click show key, it'll take you to the store automatically and show you the key that you need to actually open that crate. So if you're trying to open a brown cooler crate, it'll show you the brown summer key. If you're trying to open a robo crate, it'll show you a robo key, etc. And it just makes this whole splitting up like what was it, eight different crates, kind of more, you know, easy to manage because if you're like, okay, I want to open this brown crate but not this red one, and before you get yourself confused and trying to remember which key you're going to buy, just double-click the crate you want to open. So that's pretty convenient. All that stuff out of the way, let's get into the meat. What are the actual gameplay changes that are going on? What, how is the game going to play differently now? Uh, real quick, let's touch on MVM. I know not a lot of people play MVM anymore, but um, there is definitely still some interest in it. Um, there's a small change of all team members unready. The pre-round countdown will stop, so that'll be good if you have some overzealous randoms who hit ready up right away and your engineer's AFK or whatever. He doesn't have time to build. Just say, hey, dude, unready, unready. Everybody unready's countdown timer will stop. Uh, the other big change is now when snipers kill robots with either a headshot or the explosive headshot upgrade, the robots will drop money that will automatically be collected instead of dissolving when it would normally dissolve. Now, it doesn't get collected right away. That means that the scout has time to still pick it up in order to boost his own health, and you're not taking away overheal from the scout. But if you know, the whole team wipes or something, or if you are on, say, Cold Town and the sniper's up in the center building where it's relatively safe and the rest of the team has had to fall back to spawn, and the sniper's still on the on the foreground just sniping bots right as they drop into the spawn zone, his, his money's still going to get collected. You guys aren't going to miss out on any cash. So that's kind of nice. It's a nice little change that makes the sniper just a little bit more useful, and that's great, but unfortunately this is the only class gameplay change that was implemented in this update for Man vs. Machine. And I don't really get it because the sniper's not even the most hated class in Man vs. Machine. He's probably like third most hated behind the medic and the and the spy. So, okay, we did have that problem where if the sniper was killing bots far away from the rest of the team, then he you wouldn't get his money, and that's now fixed. But the sniper's never really been regarded as a particularly bad class to have, providing that the sniper was good, and you still need that skill. They haven't changed that fact. You still have to be really good 
to play Sniper in Man vs. Machine. You have to be able to headshot those bots pretty reliably in order to make your presence worthwhile, as compared to, you know, just kind of mindlessly rolling through with, like, Engineer, Heavy, Soldier, whatever. On the other hand, we have Medic, who is still completely worthless and desperately needs some sort of upgrade, some sort of benefit to having him on your team. In the harder waves, there's absolutely no benefit to having a Medic, because you're your damage output is frequently not going to be good enough in order to validate his presence. And the Spy is still just a shitty version of the Scout with next to no utility because his Sapper has much too long a cooldown, barely even affects giant bots, and the only thing he's good at is killing bots. Unfortunately, he's completely worthless against tank DPS, and oftentimes the problem with the harder waves is that you aren't DPSing down the tank fast enough. If I had to give a quick... Uh, recommendation just off the top of the head to improve the spy and MBM. I have no idea how to improve the medic. You're on your own there, Valve. But with the spy, give him some sort of upgrade to decrease the cooldown on his sapper and make uh, the armor penetration upgrade on his knife deal extra damage to the tank when the when the spy is mailing it. I know it doesn't make sense to backstab a tank, but um, if you make the armor penetration upgrade also increase the knife damage versus tanks, he might be a little bit more useful and generally more accepted. But Sniper, yeah, a lot of times when you pick Sniper and MVM, the other te or your teammates are like, oh, well, you better be good or we're kicking you. That's fine. But if you pick Medic or Spy, half the time your teammates are going to be like, no, please, God, no, please pick another fucking class right now. Medic even worse. Like 100% of the time you try to pick Medic and MVM, you're going to get shouted down by randoms. Now let's get on to the big part that everybody's been waiting for, which is the weapon balance changes. What has changed? What's different? Uh, quite a few items, actually. So I guess we'll just start and go straight in order of class and their items. So the Scout's Criticola uh, no longer makes him take mini crits, but instead makes damage taken increase by 25%. This isn't a huge buff because mini crits are an increase of 35% damage. So the damage penalty against the Scout is only being decreased by 10%. Um, that's definitely not bad, it's going to make you be able to take a little bit more punishment, but the rest of the effects remain the same. You're going to move faster, you're going to deal more damage, you're, you're still going to take more damage, but at least it's not mini crit damage. The shortstop saw a pretty significant change, and now when it's active, you're going to get 20% bonus healing. That means more healing on medkits, heals from medics, and heals from dispensers, etc. Probably mad milk as well, I didn't test that, but I'm sure that's true as well. But on the downside, when it's active, you also get pushed back 80% harder by everything. Bullet pushback, uh, air blast pushback, you're going to fly all over the place. It's going to be kind of hard to uh, to keep you keep yourself in one place. It's going to make it very hard to get close to a sentry if you ever get tagged by a sentry. And it can be really detrimental pinning you to a wall in close corridors. But when you're out in the open in like granary or something, it may provide a pretty useful escape mechanic as well. So that's going to be kind of interesting to see how that works in real matches. The Winger got a much needed buff. No one ever used this piece of crap. But now, even though it's still not quite as effective as the pistol in combat, it now has 25% extra jump height uh, when you have it active. That means, active means you actually have to have the weapon out in order to get the effect. You can't just have it equipped. Um, but the winger adding extra jump height basically just makes it a mobility option, sort of like the detonator for the pyro where it's not as effective in combat, but it does give you extra mobility options. I don't know uh, off the top of my head any jump spots that the scout couldn't make before in some way that he can now make due to the winger, but keep in mind the stacks with the uh, triple jump from the atomizer because you don't have to have the atomizer active in order to use the triple jump. Uh, so that's going to give you quite a bit more mobility, and if you really want to go crazy, you can start stacking it with the Fan of War and the uh, Atomizer. And now just going down the list, we run into the first set that has had its special effect removed. Now, back in the day when the Poly Account Pack came out, we had all these new sets for different classes that uh, provided all sort of statistical bonuses that a lot of people weren't happy with, and a lot of people abused, and some people didn't mind them, but... Anyway, the, the uh, special delivery set for the Scout, which was the Milkman hat, along with the Mad Milk, the Shortstop, and the Fish melee weapon. When wearing all four of those, you got 25 more max health on your Scout. And 150 health Scout is pretty bulky, especially when you can heal himself with the Mad Milk. That is completely gone, and this is true of every poly count set. There's no more max health on the wear. Now instead, when you kill an opponent while wearing the set, they're going to drop a gravestone. I was only able to test this with the soldier set because that was the only one I could complete with what I had in my inventory, but it seemed upon closer examination that the gravestone had all of those weapons on it, so it's a little bit personalized for each class, so I would assume it's the same for all the other classes as well. It's just a little cosmetic effect. It's nothing hugely exciting. It's kind of cool, I guess. Maybe there'll be some sort of way to personalize those in the future. I don't know, but 
no more statistical bonuses uh, for having a set of items. Moving on to the soldier, one of the weapons that they actually highlighted in one of the preview blog posts, the battalion's backup, which basically nobody used because it was a piece of crap. Now you receive 15% less damage from sentries in addition to the 35% uh, damage decrease that you already get from activating the, the battalion's backup, basically meaning that you take 50% less damage from sentries. So while you have it active, you can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a sentry that's not being healed by an engineer and tank it just fine, or especially if you have a medic on you, you, can, you don't even need an Uber to take out a sentry with this thing pretty useful and additionally rage is now generated only from damage just like the buff banner you don't have to take damage in order to charge this thing anymore which is great because why would you ever power something via taking damage it's just a pain in the ass it's not a good idea black box got a slight change rocket explosions now make a different sound apparently they were supposed to be making a different sound all this time and never did now they do they don't sound exactly the same as the rocket launcher sound they sound pretty cool The Beggar's Bazooka had some small changes. It had a bug fix that allowed players to hold a certain amount of rockets uh, without firing them. And on top of that, misfired rockets, which is when you load three rockets and then use it to either just hurt yourself or rocket jump around, you now lose one rocket every time it misfires. So you can only misfire up to three times. No more infinite flying with, you know, hurt me, negative a million or whatever it was. Contrary was another secondary weapon for the soldier that basically nobody used. And they buff that as well so that, you know, maybe people have some incentive to use it. Rage is now also generated only from damage dealt, just like the other two. And in addition to that, when you activate the Contrer, not only do you get the healing effect, but you also receive a speed boost as well as any teammates around you. And it's a pretty big one too. It looks to be right around the uh, speed boost from the disciplinary action, but not quite as high. It has the same animation actually, but that make, that makes you move pretty fast. I would love to see a scout with that and like critical. It probably caps out at some point, but basically that much speed spread across like five teammates could be pretty detrimental to the enemy team. So that's going to be kind of interesting to watch. The Cal Mangler 5000 saw one of the most significant changes in the patch. Originally, the Cal Mangler only had one thing really going for it, and that was that it had five rockets instead of four. No longer the case. It now has four rockets just like stock but it now deals the same amount of damage as the stock. It used to deal 10% less damage. It now deals 100% of the damage that the stock rocket launcher does. It also used to reload slower, 5% slower, also no longer the case. So on that front, it's actually exactly the same as the stock if you just look at those. There are some extra traits to it though. Uh, it still deals only 20% damage to sentries, which is unfortunate. It's still gonna be terrible at taking out sentries without help from your team. Um, and it still has the fully charged uh, slow crit shot, which is if you have a full clip, you can slow down for a second, charge up a massive crit boosted single shot that will also disable any buildings in the area. So that's pretty cool. If you look at it this way, it actually, if you were on a competitive server where almost nobody's playing engineer and their lack of random critical hits won't hurt it, it's actually kind of a straight upgrade to the to the stock rocket launcher in the fact that it can use this crit ability i don't think it's actually going to ever be used because the the mini crit ability is going to be completely worthless in competitive play but it is kind of interesting to think about if you really think about it though if you wanted to you could use it in case somebody switched to engineer uh which does happen every so often and then have you know basically disable it so that your scouts or your pocket can take it out um i, I guess you could use it that way but the big thing is you would never ever want to use it when your medic is running crits because another detriment to the cow mangler is that not only can it not deal random critical hits, but it can't be crit boosted either. So um, it's interesting. I don't know. It's definitely more viable. Um, they also updated the tooltip to describe that it also sets players on fire. I guess they forgot that part. And most importantly to me, there are new particles, a new particle effects and a new sound effect for the uh, cow mangler and it looks and sounds a million times better than it ever did. I personally love it. it. Actually looks like a solid rocket now, but it still retains that laser aspect. It's cool. Check it out. I like it. The escape plan saw a nerf. It's only one change, but it's pretty significant. It's now basically like the Gru, where when you pull it out, you get marked for death, or in other words, you receive mini crits for, uh, until you put it away, and then for like three seconds or something like that after 
you put it away. So um, soldiers are still going to maintain that mobility, but at a risk. And considering it scales up your speed inversely with your health, you're already going to be low when you pull it out if you want to actually get a decent speed boost off of it. So it's going to be really risky to pull that thing out. You're really going to have to try to duck behind corners and just generally avoid damage when you have to fall back on your escape plan. It's going to be really interesting to see how this affects players' choice of melee weapon in competitive wouldn't be surprised to see if it was still the melee of choice, but soldiers kind of got nerfed with this one. That's a pretty big change. The Liberty Launcher got changed big time as well. I don't know what they had against the soldier and how the soldier is being played, but goddamn, there are a lot of changes. So the Liberty Launcher is kind of getting side graded. It no longer has only three rockets in its clip. It now has four rockets, but it also deals 25% less damage. The rocket speed remains the same. So this it was always known as sort of a crutch weapon for low skill soldiers who couldn't land regular uh, rocket launcher shots at the speed of the regular rockets but also couldn't be accurate enough to use the direct hit so that liberty launcher was just the middle ground for skillless soldiers at least that's what everybody said but now you have an extra rocket but also deal a lot less damage i was testing it you could still two shot 125 hp classes but you're going to need to be much more accurate with it in order to make that that kill successful. In addition, I mean, 25% damage is a pretty big detriment. That's a pre that's a pretty big penalty. But on top of that, um, you're gonna have a harder time definitely killing heavies for sure. Other soldiers, even demo men and, and pyros, and to a certain extent, medics. Medics can still be two shot, but it's gonna take two direct hits at a pretty reasonable distance. So. I don't know. I honestly can't tell if this is a nerf or a buff. Personally, I think it's a nerf, but. Um, you know, four rockets is, is a pretty good thing as well. So I'm thinking it's going to be more of a training wheel sort of item than a crutch weapon. Still going to be associated with low skill players. That's just my prediction. We'll see. The original, just like the black box, got its own rocket explosion sounds. Nothing big there. And the tank buster set had its sentry damage resistance removed in exchange for gravestone drops. But the sentry damage resistance on wear thing uh, kind of got moved over to the battalion's backup. Moving on to the pyro, just the phlogistonator had a tiny little bug fix. If you go to a resupply cabinet, it will no longer reset your oomph meter. The power jack saw a pretty major change as well. Now, of course, with all the set effects being removed, the gas jockey no longer makes you move 10% faster in exchange for 10% bullet damage vulnerability but you now move 15% faster while the power jack is your active weapon. And that's pretty cool. It means that you can uh, still chase people down as long as you have time to switch to your melee weapon or if you're using the degreaser, that's not really a big deal. You can just switch right back to your uh, to your flamethrower as soon as you get with back into range. You can still chase down spies and everything. You just can't be spraying while you do it. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. The major, major downside here is that you will now take 20% more damage from all sources while you have it equipped, not while it's active. At least that's what the tooltip says. I wasn't really able to test this too accurately, but I mean, 20% damage vulnerability at all times is basically 20% less health. That is, that's a huge, huge detriment. That hurts a lot. I can't see anybody in their right mind actually using this um, unless they were just, you know, purposely going out of the way to try to get things, something done with this weapon. I, I don't know why they'd ever make it like this. I, I would have to say, make a 20% damage vulnerability while it's equipped, just like you only get the move speed while it's equipped, and then it would be a fairly balanced weapon. Good, and definitely competitive with the extinguisher, but still fairly balanced. But 20% damage vulnerability at all times? I, I disagree with that, just my opinion. We'll see how it plays out. Moving on to the demo, man, the charge and charge definitely got a huge buff in the form of afterburn immunity. You no longer get set on fire after taking fire damage. You can still be hurt by fire, but just like the pyro, you no longer get set on fire after coming in contact with one of the pyro's fire weapons or the hulong heater or whatever. That's really awesome. It's gonna make the charge and target actually worth using over the splendid screen. It's gonna give it some, you know, it has even more defensive capabilities and it's gonna make demo knights Actually, pretty dangerous for pyros, especially those that aren't using a flamethrower that can air blast reliably, like the backburner or the phlogistonator, which can't at all. Um, they can still keep you at arm's length with the air blast, but uh, if you can't set them on fire, that means you can't extinguish them. That was generally the de facto way to dispatch demo knights that were using the charge and charge and had that big fire immunity. So um, that makes them much more tanky, at least against one enemy, and one of their biggest enemies, to be honest. Pyro is just the perfect counter to demo knights. 
The loose cannon saw some buffs as well as some side grades. You no longer have that damage increase over distance. Uh, the range no longer affects the impact damage at all. It's relatively low at all distances now. But the reason for this is the charge time has been reduced to one second, which means the, uh, the, the bomb will detonate much faster now. This makes it much better at close ranges. You don't have to try to range people out with it, and it's definitely easier to time. It's definitely easier to cannonball jump but you do lose that long range capability that it used to have. Very interesting, they gave it a buff in the form of new terminology. Now when you direct impact an enemy and then the cannonball explodes and hits them without touching a surface, it's called a double donk. And when you double donk somebody or give them the double D, they now take a mini crit from it and there's an associated sound and particle effect above their head, it exclaiming about the donk. And of course the fire resistance effect on the expert's ordnance set has been removed. The buffalo steak sandwich for the heavy uh, being exactly the same as the criticola for the scout is now exactly the same as the criticola for the scout. All damage taken increased by 25% but you no longer take mini crits. Pretty straightforward. The Dalokos bar actually had a slight change in that the amount of health restored per bite is now 25 instead of 15, which basically just means your health bumps up a little bit faster. Not a huge buff, I don't really see the point of this, but you know, whatever. It's the Dalokos bar. And that's it for the heavy. Really? No Tomislav changes, no Natasha changes, no Brass Beast changes? Okay, alright, whatever. Moving on to the Engineer, the Gunslinger finally, finally got a nerf. It's not that big a one, not as big as I had hoped, but still nice. Apparently the fact that Midian Sentries used to regenerate health while they were being constructed was a bug this entire time. We all assumed it was a feature, and with Valve, sometimes they're one and the same. But apparently, that was a bug this whole time, because the patch notes literally say, fixed a bug that caused Midian Sentries to heal while being constructed. That was a bug? And you let it go on for that long? I, I, I'm completely speechless. This is just ridiculous but at least the gunslinger is being nerfed a little bit i personally would have preferred a metal cost increase or at least a longer build time or lessened range or less firing rate something to just make it not so unbalanced and just a constant portable 2v1 i'm just i'm not okay with it at least now we can shut down the sentry before it gets built while the engineer kills us and then our teammates can finish him off because he won't have a sentry the Rescue Ranger got straight buffed, a minor increase in damage for Bolt. I believe the base damage of the weapon used to be 34, I want to say 34, and is now 40. It now crits for the same amount as the stock revolver, which is 120, which is cool. And the healing from the bolts when used on friendly building has been increased from 50 to 75. The short circuit's finally been buffed. It used to be it would cost 35 metal to shoot no matter what. Now, if you successfully destroy a projectile with your shot, it'll only cost 18 ammo, which is almost half. So, that'll give you more sustainability, especially if you're sitting on your own dispenser, and you'll be able to more successfully defend your sentry nest with it as long as you're accurate and good on your timing. If you're spamming it, though, you're, go you're still going to run out of metal pretty quickly. Much needed buff. I'm, I'm going to be pretty interested to see if this thing actually ever gets used. The Wrangler finally got some nerfs as well. If you're firing at a long range, you're going to see some deviation on the accuracy of your bullets uh, as you continue to fire from longer and longer distances. Point blank, it's not noticeable at all, but as you get further and further back, you're going to see that there's a pretty significant difference in spread. It's going to be interesting to see how impacted this is in actual gameplay and if this is going to reduce the effectiveness of the uh, ever unpopular mini wrangles combo, but we will see. Nobody took accuracy deviation seriously until we saw how shitty the beggar's bazooka was. Now for the medic, the crusader's crossbow saw some changes that are mostly cosmetic. The arrow projectile is no longer an arrow, it is now a giant syringe needle, and it now has a trail effect that, if you look closely, is actually just a whole bunch of uh, crosses. The reload animation has been changed, it looks a lot nicer, you can definitely notice a difference. And on top of that, uh, there is a slight bug fix. You can no longer heal players that are using items that block healing, such as the Equalizer. The Quick Fix finally got some more buffs, much, much needed. It now does have an overheal. It's 50% of the overheal of the stock metagun, but it is still an overheal. It's very, very nice. On top of that, when you activate your Uber charge and you don't have a heal target, the healing goes to you, the medic, and that will overheal you and rapid heal you until the Uber runs out or until you switch weapons, which is actually going to make it pretty interesting for, of all things, battle medics. I'm, I guarantee we're going to see a lot of battle medics running around with Uber saws, trying to build Uber off of 
people, trying to kill people, and then once the enemy team gets on their ass, popping Uber and running away. Finally, when you're Ubered by the Quick Fix, you will no longer experience pushback from shotguns. It specifically says the force in nature, but I don't know if that includes, like, bullet knockback from a regular shotgun if you're in mid-jump or something. Gonna need some clarification on that. We'll see. Vaccinator also got a much-needed buff. When you Uber with a certain type of damage resistance, if you get crit by that type of damage that you're currently resisting, the crit will not deal any extra damage to you, but in exchange, the Uber charge will be depleted a certain amount in order to compensate for absorbing that critical hit. As for the Sniper, the Bizarre Bargain, it seems may have gotten a nerf, but it's actually a buff. It's a little confusing to read. It says the starting charge rate starts at negative 40% charge rate instead of 20%, which is a nerf. That is a nerf in that regard, but it says you cap the max charge rate to 200%. The old max charge rate was 150%, so you can now get up to 50% more on your uh, charge rate. In addition to that, it used to stack up to seven heads in order to reach that 150. Now it only takes six. This is actually an undocumented change. It only takes six heads to get up to the full 200% charge rate. So that's gonna make the bizarre bargain ultimately harder to get started, but it will reward really good accuracy. Cozy Camper got changed around a bit. There is no more movement penalty uh, when you're using it, so you are no longer a super, super slow man while you're using it, but you take 20% more damage from everything. Darwin's Danger Shield is kind of making up for the loss of the Croco-style set headshot immunity. You now have a 15% bullet damage resistance while wearing it, which means a quickscope headshot from another sniper is not going to kill you. The quickscope headshot deals 150 damage, which is the actual max health of a sniper wearing a Darwin's Danger Shield, but with that damage resistance, you're going to take either 127 or 128 damage, which will leave you just alive. In exchange for this, you're going to take 20% more damage from explosive weapons, so obviously you're going to be susceptible to damage from soldiers and demo men, but keep in mind that if you're using the Bushwhacker, which is just a very popular melee option in general, you're also going to have a 20% fire resistance uh, penalty in addition to your explosive penalty, so you're going to be taking a lot of extra damage all the way around. And finally, what a lot of you wanted to hear from me, changes to the Spy. The big one, and the one that seems to be either pissing off or exciting the most people, is the Dead Ringer. Now, even as a Spy player, I'm all for the Dead Ringer nerf and the encouragement of players using other Invisibility Watch options. What I'm not crazy about is how they actually implemented this change. The change is, when your Fane Death is active, as you continue to take damage during that Fane, it decreases the effect of the Fane Death. That's not very well explained. What that means is... As you continue to take damage while you're invisible with the uh, Fain Death effect on, you're going to continue to take more and more damage until eventually you're taking the regular 100% damage. Your damage resistance is going to slowly erode away, and it'll happen very quickly if you're being continually hurt by a fast-firing enemy like a Pyro or a Heavy who does lots of damage per second instead of in chunks. That's going to mean, once again, Pyros are on the major threat list for, for Spies where they haven't been for a while. Uh, heavies are going to mess you up if they know that you're alive. It basically means you're going to have to convince people with your Fain Death. What I don't like about the change is that there's no visual indicator of where your damage resistance is at. You're just going to have to develop a feel for it of, you know, of how much damage you've taken so far and how close you are to just being straight up vulnerable because your invisibility actually isn't affected at all. Your invisibility will last the same exact amount of time. It's only the damage resistance effect that's being picked away here. If they could somehow come up with some sort of HUD indicator of damage resistance under feign death, that would be great, but I doubt it's going to happen. The change itself is good, I'm just not crazy about the lack of information given to the player regarding what their status is on that damage resistance. Tying into the Dead Ringer, the Saharan Spy set no longer decreases your decloak sound volume, um, and of course the downside is no longer present either. This is a pretty big change to the Saharan Spy set in regards to using the Dead Ringer because I would basically say don't ever use the Dead Ringer with your Eternal Reward anymore. I mean, there's always going to be reasons to use things in pubs if you're just goofing around, but it's definitely not going to be as viable as using the, uh, the Eternal Reward with either of the other Invisibility Watches because now you have no way of convincing people that you're actually faint. And on top of that, they're going to hear you when they're on the lookout for you when you decloak. Pretty much is going to be very hard to get away. So the other invisibility watch options are now much more attractive with your eternal reward. Um, 
But here's the plus side. We don't get a calling card because that would be sort of counterintuitive to your eternal reward stealthy of removing the bodies effect. So now we have enhanced taunts that now have a swirling sand particle effect. I just think this is really cool. I was kind of hoping that this was going to be the cosmetic effect that all of the sets got. Something along the lines of this, like either a permanent particle effect or a taunt particle effect. The Spy's the only one that got it because the calling card thing didn't really fit with your eternal reward stealth aspects. So... I think it's really cool. It looks nice, um, and it actually fits the set pretty well. And that also transitions nice into Le Tranger, the gun for the Saharan Spy set. This got a huge buff. This is like the my favorite part of the update, honestly. Le Tranger, which is already, in my opinion, a great gun, now has a 40% increased cloak duration for all invisibility watches while you have it equipped. Not while it's the active weapon, while you have it equipped. This means the Invisibility Watch, which already had 9 seconds of effective cloak time in addition to ammo pickups, now has a base 13 seconds of effective cloak time in addition to ammo pickups. The Invisibility Duration of the Dead Ringer, which is originally 6.5 seconds, is now 9.1 seconds, which is just above the stock invisib Invisibility Watch's stock time without La which is, that, that's just a long time for the Dead Ringer to be, uh, to be cloaked, and... Although it doesn't extend the invulnerability time or the, or the, uh, the damage res resistance time at all, it's a kind of decent trade-off for the Dead Ringer, I guess, in order to recover some of that lost effectiveness. And my favorite part, it makes the Cloak and Dagger so much more viable in pub play. It's going to take your standard, it's about 6 seconds when you're running of invisibility time, and bumps it to almost 9, which is just fucking amazing and especially my favorite part for all three of these watches is it does increase your effective cloak time but even more importantly it does not increase the amount of time it takes to regen those cloaks so it's not like you have a 40 percent larger cloak meter it's just that it drains 40 percent slower but it still increases and refills in the same intervals whether it's through ammo pickups or just over time and that means that the stop and go stop and go of the cloak and dagger is going to be much better because you're going to just overall have a better move to stop ratio if that makes any sense but anyway i'm honestly going to be surprised if the latonja doesn't become the standard go-to gun for highlander spies where in highlander i don't play highlander so i could be wrong but in highlander the spy's main purpose isn't killing people it's staying cloaked keeping tabs on the enemy team and relaying intelligence back to their team and just communicating very well and the ability to stay cloaked 40% longer is a huge boon to that. And uh, considering how popular the use of the Cloak and Dagger is in Highlander, uh, and I think, in my opinion, the Cloak and Dagger is the one that benefits most from this change, I would not be surprised to see spies foregoing the lethality of the Stock Revolver and the Ambassador in exchange for the incredibly enhanced utility of Le Tranger. Really great change. I'm super excited about it. One last tiny little change. The Spy Sickle had a bug that would cause the charge meter to sometimes stay the same when you were killed that's fixed that's all so that is it that is the summer update guys i hope you enjoyed the update uh there are going to be quite a few changes not too many the game itself isn't being completely reinvented as some of us were led to believe but uh there are quite a few changes being made to everybody's favorite or least favorite weapon so hope you enjoyed this little analysis and if you found this video informational or helpful please give me a like i very much appreciate that and i will love you for it and i hope to see you guys next time goodbye